So whoever had a set of these as a kid, <laughs> raise your hand. I'm talking, of course, about Airfix World War II German Infantry. A little set that kind of changed everything. And I think this is probably one of the most iconic toy soldier sets ever made. So as this is going to be uh, the first video in the series of nine on the Airfix uh, brown boxes, I figured I'd do like a little brief background and set the stage for everything, how uh, the toy soldier <laughs> market or whatever looked at the time. So you got to figure in the US, uh, you had companies like Marks making uh, big bags of unpainted toy soldiers or the big play sets that were really cool toys. But I mean, the figures were kind of poorly sculpted and the poses were kind of weird sometimes. So they work well as toy soldiers, but not in, in a scale model sense. And then over in England, you had kind of the opposite where you had better sculpted figures. They were already painted most of the time and it came like in really nice boxes, you know, with a, with a plastic window on them. You got like six, eight or ten figures maybe in a set. So I think Airfix bridged that gap kind of perfectly between toy soldiers and scale model figures. And also in that, you know, their boxes contain 29 uh, pieces, 28 sometimes. So, so kids could buy this for not that big of a chunk of change and build up their armies to play with and adults could buy these as scale model figures and customize and paint and i don't think anyone really had done that up until then and i think it was equally appreciated <laughs> in both both camps that you know these were i mean the the natural stances the natural looking figures the ergonomics of them and just the proportions and everything uh, and the details made them, you know, stand out to anybody that bought them. And it, it got to be incredible as a kid to open a pack of this if you had something previously that was more toy-like and get a set of these German infantry. It must have been amazing. And just a little, little thing. Uh, <laughs> The, the brown boxes came in uh, three different types of boxes. For, the first one was this one with the uh, rectangular logo and the back looked like this. And it listed the figures that were available at the time. And then they changed the back on them not sure exactly when but i think then in 1972 they added the round badge logo and i think they changed the back a little bit as well but of course the round badge then carried over to the target box that were released in 1973 and those are the ones i remember from my childhood and the ones i relate airfix to the most if you're a few years older than me you'll probably remember the brown boxes uh, the most yeah, and also the boxes is another thing with Airfix that they did different from anybody else that this artwork is fantastic. Watercolor, acrylics, whatever you call it. Fantastic little uh, pieces of art with a lot of cool action on it. Uh, <laughs> there was, it was nothing like this on the market at this time. Very nice. I really like this. So there was a whole package. Airfix was really good at this. And it must have been so cool to see these when they were released, walking into the toy shop and seeing these boxes on the shelf. It's, uh, it's got to have been amazing. So now to the most important part, of course, the figures. First of all, most maybe the most important figure in a toy soldier set, the officer. And here, I mean, Ron Cameron, what an amazing figure, right? Uh, just a powerful, cool, very natural looking, realistic pose. I think it's very strong. Kind of a cool, stoic officer leading from the front. So nice. And all the details in here. There was nothing like this on the market, I think, at the time that was this detailed. I'm not sure if everything is historically correct, perfectly like that. I'm not into that as much as uh, maybe some other people. But yeah, this is an amazing figure, right? And I mean, have a look at like the facial features, uh, the even the pistol where you can see the finger uh, on the trigger there. Yeah, this is really good. Cool to have a, a, as an officer leading your troops or it looks like a really, really cool uh, bad guy if you're playing the allied side of things, right? And then another important figure in every <laughs> toy army, uh, toy soldier army, is the standing rifleman. Kind of the bread and butter of uh, toy soldiers, right? And this one is exceptionally good looks so natural leaning into the recoil a little bit to mitigate the recoil aiming down down sights looks really good all the details on the rifle everything all the little details and the creases in the uniform is it's just so good i mean setting this up it makes it just makes it different when you're setting this up as a kid when someone kind of gave you the respect of actually doing something this good i like standing rifleman Another soldier you need to have in your army is, of course, the kneeling rifleman. Because, I mean, a lot, a lot of the buildings you got, 
you know, the wall had little ups and downs. And so to get them in perfect cover, I always put like the kneeling rifleman in the low cover and then the standing in the, in the, in the high cover. So it looks really, really cool. And this one is also just, it's just good. It just looks like a real natural figure, natural pose. Also aiming down sights. You can see the finger on the trigger. Yeah, very cool. And then a very important figure actually to a lot of kids, uh, the soldier throwing a grenade. My pet peeve is when uh, this soldier is not holding on to his uh, main weapon or like this one, have it slung on his back. Um, so this is uh, a like for me, two thumbs up, I guess. Uh, and it's just, it's the same thing. It's just so powerful. It looks so cool. Like he's going to heave that thing so far into the enemy line. It's such a great figure. And again, just the facial features, everything on these. So cool. So my least favorite figures are always the non-firing figures. But if you have only firing soldiers, it's going to get kind of repetitive in a set. But so anyways, uh, you always get someone running or walking like that. So in this set, you have one soldier running. But it's still, it's a very good figure. I'm not sure why he's got the rifle on the side like that, though. But anyways, I like it. Shoulders back, running, looks really natural. Very cool figure. And then this one, this is kind of important. <laughs> the classic bent barrel. Important, the submachine gunner. If you have riflemen that shoots uh, at a distance, you got to have someone that can fire up close, right? In close quarters. So you need a submachine gunner. This one is kind of weird, though, because this submachine gun isn't really anything that was uh, uh, widely used. I'm not even sure which one it is. It's not an MP40, that's for sure. But it's just a cool little figure. Um, and uh, I can still remember the sounds that you made uh, from the different weapons. And, you know, the submachine gun from the machine gun had totally different sounds when we made them uh, when we were shooting and firing at each other. But also then, that brings me to the next one, the machine gun, the force multiplier. Uh, maybe one of the most valuable uh, figures in a set when you trade it with friends. And in this set, you get actually the loader as well, which I think is kind of cool. Gives the whole thing a bit of a, should we say, weight to it. I mean, when you set it up, it looks cool to have a loader. You know, you could actually fire and he can change the belts really quick. Uh, in some of the sets, you know, in the British sets, when you had the Bren gun, there, there was no loader, of course. So this I really like. Uh, and... Uh, just the way they are sculpted just looks really nice. It's really cool. And that's kind of the, the thing with this set, you know. There's no awesome figures like a flamethrower or a, like a bazooka or something like that. It's no heavy machine guns or stuff like that. It's just like your bread and butter infantry set. So it's really cool because if you want to make scale models, you want to have just regular soldiers and you can customize them. I think that's why it's so good that sometimes these don't actually have that much stuff and they, they don't differentiate that much. They all have the same stuff. So if you want to customize these as a scale modeler, you could do that and add things to them. And then just as a kid, having your basic army that you play with, it makes it kind of fun because it was more even. It's always like a big argument. Oh, you're going to have the flamethrower guy. That's not fair. And, you know, whatever. So I think this is cool. I think they did the right thing with these. Like I said, nothing like this on the market at this time. And another funny thing about these, and, and to me at least, and probably to a lot of you out there as well, is that um, this bluish gray, to me, is... This is German soldier color. <laughs> you know, the paratroopers had the same color and uh, the mountain troops had the same color. And most of the allies, the British and the US, were olive green. So that's how an allied soldier looks, of course, except for the, the US paratroopers. Uh, and then you, the desert soldiers, soldiers were always tan. So to me, when I see a set of Mark's uh, German infantry that were gray, it kind of looks off to me. But it's just how imprinted these got in our minds as kids. So I think that's about it for this one. There's probably more we could talk about, but I can't go on forever. I gotta let you guys go. Uh, anyways, uh, as always, at the end of the video, I'll do the 360 spinning around thing of each figure if you want to check them out for yourself up close. Uh, I also have one of these Kofi things. If you want to support the channel, I'll put a link in the description. And, you know, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Because, I mean, there's going to be eight more so, more videos on these, the brown boxes. So if you want to get notified when, they, uh, when I release them, you got to subscribe. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I guess that's it for now then. Cheers. Take care.